Welcome back to Proud Masculine. Welcome back to the channel. And today's video is going to be about the ability to enact violence and, uh, and what that means and what that looks like. And lately, a topic around me, you know, with clients, associates, just uh, over here in conversations, uh, private conversations among other people in my dojo, with other people I know that take different disciplines of martial arts, is what is the best route to take? And so how I'm gonna tie this in with what that has to do with self-improvement and, uh, and how that ties into, you know, quote, masculinity and what that means as a man in particular for you. So uh, let's get started and I'll tie it all in and it'll make sense. So first off, you know, from the get-go, I want to make it known that I detest violence. That is the absolute last course of action taken in the event that I need to defend myself or my loved ones. And look, I'm not above you know, an accidental bump on an awkward social situation with another dude, it's all puffed up and, you know, full of confrontation. And, and the more you're around things, like, you can get a sense. There's a vibe of, uh, you know, I can pretty much walk into a place and you could see that guy's just full of hostility and conflict and contempt for anybody around them. And, you know, and then at the in the section of an occurrence happening over something as trivial as a shoulder bump or, you know, through a crowd or, you know, in a place where you back into somebody in a crowded place and, you know, or somebody eyeballing you, you know, trying to size you up and shit. You know, there's, there's got to be a, a more sensible approach and along with the ability to enact violence immediately when necessary to protect yourself or your loved ones, there is a mental component, some verbal judo. And look, I'll do, I'll do whatever it takes to avoid the fight. I don't need to be the bigger, tougher guy. I don't need to beat somebody's ass over, you know, a dick swinging contest in the moment of, even if it was the other person's fault. My first response is, Psh, my, my bad. Sorry about that. Uh, I wasn't even paying attention. Something to de-escalate immediately. To let this person know, like, hey, I am not interested in jumping into some scrap over something as simple as us accidentally bumping shoulders or, you know, somebody's trying to uh, size you up and stare you down. Just fucking look away. This it's not worth it. And usually, and look, I'm going to tell you, in this world, there are people who are violent. People who do want to hurt you. People who do want to take your shit. But the likelihood of actually running into a situation where you cannot de-escalate, it's highly unlikely. Percentages are small where you're actually going to have to get down and dirty with somebody and scrap over something simple like that. A lot of times, um, you know, and I hear guys like, well, what, you can just let somebody check you like that? Uh, I don't tolerate disrespect and, you know, that's bullshit. That, that, that there's no place for that in society. Yet, yeah, there are people out there like that. There are people that will test you. And there is at a certain point where you might have to go hands on with somebody. And, and this is why I believe, and this is where it ties into, you know, being a well-integrated man is having the potential to be violent, immediately violent, and enact violence on somebody. You shut that shit down, there's got to be a switch where you go from, hey, I don't want any trouble, to too late, this is what I have to do in this moment. And... My preference is to get it over with as fast as possible, not being some long drawn out scrap with somebody rolling all over the place. 
Um, so the topic of what is the most effective martial art combative system, uh, you know, boxing, wrestling, BJJ, Muay Thai, Krav, and Sambo, you know, there's all kind of disciplines and all. And my answer is yes. Yes. Look, I don't, I'm not even a big proponent of Taekwondo, but when I was younger and my late teens, I got to a fight with a guy who knew Taekwondo. And this dude kicked the shit out of me, and it hurt. Had he kept going, I might have lost. This dude might have got the best of me. All he did was kick me and stand there, and I was able to get inside. But So uh, the point is, is whatever you take that can put you ahead of the average person or give you an edge in that situation where when you do react, you have something to fall back on other than trying to guess your way through this conflict. You know, if something does happen to turn physical. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there gung-ho about fighting, gung-ho about violence. Hey, I don't put up with that shit. This, this, that, and the other thing. Like, those people don't know what violence looks like and the potential violence has. I do. I've been in many violent situations. I've seen it. I've seen what can happen. And there's always the potential for catastrophic, uh, a catastrophic outcome. At the end of the day, if you think this through a minute, there's always the potential for somebody to wind up dead. That's serious shit. And you think about that. There's a potential for somebody to wind up dead. When you start going hands on, that means you accidentally run into somebody in a public place and the potential is somebody could wind up dead because of that. So what the fuck is really more important? I, and, and here's the thing, here's the irony. And the more you prepare, the better trained up, uh, the prepared you are to take on a violent encounter, the less likely you're going to be put in a situation where somebody's going to come initiate violence with you. The less you look like a victim, an easy target of prey, the less likely you are to have somebody come in and try to start shit with you. The last real scrap I got into, I was 19. I got into a job site scrap when I was 23, but it wasn't. It was like a little bit of grabbing. Some guy on a job was losing... Uh, getting a divorce and he was just pissy. He was a little bit of a bully anyway. And then he kind of took it out on me. We scrapped a little bit. You know, that day we were having lunch together and we did a side job. It, it was nothing. It was, uh, the guy was frustrated. Couldn't process it properly. I got the shit end of it. At the end of the day, it was no big deal. So that goes to show you. And I'm 45. So I've gone years without having to go hands-on with anybody. And there was many opportunities. There was many of those accidental bumps and spilled drinks and, you know, uh, mean mugging incidents and all. But, I mean, on, in the last, in my younger years, you know, we'd scrap a lot. And, you know, I've been in violent places and I've seen the, I've seen the outcome. I've experienced it firsthand. It's not pretty. It's not worth it. Now, when a push comes to shove, if it's your ass or theirs, I know I'd rather have uh, an advantage going into it. So any of these disciplines, boxing, you learn to lose your hands. You could de-escalate something quick by taking somebody out of that moment by popping them and knowing where to deliver that strike for whatever position you're in. Learning how to really throw a punch and then take a punch. Well, how to cover, how to fade, you know, how to, how to, you know, not take, you know, rolling, rolling out of a punch and what that looks like so that the maximum impact is not effective and you're going to have a counter. You know, BJJ, that seems to be the most popular thing right now, and for good reason. It's um, Muay Thai. I mean, that's great for practical application, hand-to-hand combatives, crowd. You know, be aware of your surroundings. Violence of action, get out. And uh, my personal preference is 
traditional Japanese jiu-jitsu, coupled with a sprinkling of hand-to-hand combatives here and there. And the reason for traditional Japanese jiu-jitsu, that is an ancient martial art. It covers the whole spectrum, stand up on the ground, everything in between, striking, throws, arm locks, chokes, uh, you know, encountering, uh, it's an all-encompassing martial art. The difficulty with that is, it's hard to really spar other than the grappling. Everything else is pretty much drilling. And even the grappling, you know, you're not going, when somebody taps, you stop. You're not snapping anybody's arms. If you land a choke, they tap, you let go, you're not knocking them out. So there are, but there's all the limitations. And sometimes we have a go a little bit harder depending on who you're with, but there's nothing that can ever prepare you for what it's like to be in an actual violent encounter. Nothing rehearsed, nothing drilled that can mimic exactly what that looks like. But at the end of the day, when something like that does happen, when you encounter with and a violent encounter, or you know there's an immediate threat, if you're with your girl or you're with your kids, or even if you're by yourself, there's nothing that can prepare you for that. Like you're not training in a highly stressed state with the adrenaline pumping. You know, you start sweating, you get a little cold, your hands get heavy. Um, So that's just a matter of repetition and training. You know, they say when, when, when you're in a situation like that, you don't rise to the occasion, you fall to the level of your training. And if you're not prepared, and there's a violent person out there who has no fucking problem with hurting you, you're going to be stuck. You're going to be in a, at a disadvantage immediately. Whereas if you have something to fall back on, if you've boxed, and you, and you know you know how to put your hands up and get in a defensive position and uh, posture up like you know what you're doing, you, know, you, you have an advantage now. Now you're ready. Uh, BJJ, Muay Thai, Krav Maga, anything, any, any training you have automatically puts you at an advantage. A minimal level of training is still better than what the average person walks around without in society. And an a intermediate level puts you in, a, in a, uh, the highest percentile of people who, you know, have some kind of training and uh, some kind of skill to be able to protect yourself and get yourself out of a violent encounter as quickly as possible. Because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Preserving and guarding your safety and life of you and your loved ones. And if you can eliminate a threat quickly and get remove yourself from danger, that's ideal. You know, and, and I see a lot of these um, videos out now. You know, I kind of, on YouTube, go through this, uh, you know, they, they kind of pick up on the stuff you look at sometimes. And I look at a lot of the jujitsu, judo stuff, and... There's this, uh, you know, it's just self-defense people. You know, show you how to take away a knife and a gun. I, I highly recommend you don't do that. You know, if it, and here's, and here's why I say, you know, s- s- training is. I believe you should train to be violent. Just because you have training doesn't mean you have the capability to enact violence on somebody. That's weird. It's that's a little foreign to some people. Like when a push comes to shove. Dropping all ideas, no fear, and and this is what I was alluding to earlier about being unprepared and no training. You're gonna freeze. There's a moment when you, uh, you know, flight, fight, or freeze. You know, if you're not ready, you're gonna freeze. If the opportunity's there for flight, you get the fuck. If you need to fight, you're ready to fight. But you don't want to freeze. Freezing is the last thing you want to do is let somebody get an advantage on you. You know, there's so many uh, uh, angles and, and nuance about what that even looks like. You know, how do you stand when you start, you know, sensing there might be something wrong. 
and what's your posture? Somebody's approaching you in a violent way. What do you do? Put your hands by your side, standing flat-footed, kind of looking meek and small? No. Like you back up, hands up, you know, power posture, power base, and you're ready. At least your hands up to deflect and get in. You know, there's so many little nuanced things that you don't, that, that's not even considered. And if that's not what you've re, uh, repeatedly trained for over and over again, that's not going to be your reaction. Your reaction is to be to get small, get nervous, get scared. It's not a good look. And, uh, and nowadays, you know, it's preached that, oh, men are, uh, you know, aggression violence, competitive, uh, being competitive. This is all masculine traits. You know, this is nothing new since the dawn of times. You know, this is what men do. You know, especially younger men. They're full of piss and vinegar. Everybody wants to fight and compete. And, you know, they're trying to deny the, uh, the fact that this is a naturally occurring characteristic of men is aggression. And there's a healthy aggression and then there's a, a, a dysfunctional aggression that doesn't apply to society. But there are all people out there like that. And you know the old saying, I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And at the end of the day, when you have put time in keeping yourself strong, working out, hitting the gym, involved in uh, some kind of combative sport, uh, martial art, you carry yourself differently. There's a, there's a, it's a sub-communication, just the way you posture up, the way you carry yourself, the way you scan a room. Like it allows you to relax. You know, there's certain characteristics, there's things that happen to your body when you train with people and you get your arm stretched and you cross-faced and when you spar and you get hit, hit a lot and or you're catching accidental elbows and face palms and stuff like that, your body gets stronger, you look harder, you look tougher. You know, you see a lot of guys with uh, color flower ears. That's not necessary. But that's a clear, clear indication that, you know, it's probably not the guy you want to mess with. Um, you know, you, you, you have these little microfractures and your body's pushed to its physical limits when you're training with somebody and you gain some uh, some grit. And it kind of shows up. It shows up in your hands. It shows up in your posture. Your shoulders, you know, you typically, you know, from getting dinged a lot in the forehead and your jaw, clenching, grabbing a lot. Like, those things show up physically. It's, it's a subconscious, um, I don't know what to call it. It's like it's subcommunicated that this guy looks like probably don't, he'll be a handful. So, the way to, so, you know, the paradox is the best way to avoid violence is know how to be violent and look like it. And fortunately, knock on wood, I haven't had to in a long time, and I hope that's not the case. I hope I live the rest of my life, I'll never have to worry about that. But I mean, I walk around just as, as an observer, a natural observer, you know, people watching and just studying my surroundings and seeing, you know, the way men carry themselves. There's a whole lot of men out there, man. I'm just, I'll tell you, I don't think they'd have a chance. I just don't. They don't look like it. You know, and that's, uh, in my opinion, due to this uh, social program and just trying to feminize men. And at the end of the day, as a protector provider, you know, this is something you need to be able to provide as protection. And that requires a certain level of, of violence that if need be, if you hit the on switch to go and get it. And that's it. It's not a bad thing. And Jordan Peterson says something about, you know, you gotta be able to, I don't know. I'm a butcher if I say it. Something about being a monster. And, and uh, something else about if you think 
strong, masculine men are dangerous, you know, wait till you get to the weak ones. I don't know, something like that. But, you know, so yes, violence. The ability to enact violence immediately, without question, and actually know what you do and have a direction you're going in. Because a street fight is nothing, like a real street fight or something that pops off, is nothing like it looks in the movies. It's nothing like you're gonna rehearse in a dojo or a studio or a ring. It doesn't look like that. It's ugly, it's sloppy, it's uncomfortable. It's usually over pretty quick. And um, you know, there's things you can do to make sure you're not the one it's over with. And that's my two cents on that. So whether it's boxing, BJJ, wrestling, I mean, it's good to have a nice mix, combination of a few things. But I mean, only if only one, you're better prepared than the average person walking around out there. Like a blue belt in BJJ, like just like he can walk around and probably whip half the population's ass or more. You know, that's just me. That's just anecdotal. There are statistics, but um, you know, it's true. So, point. Take a martial art. Take a combative sport. Look, if you like this video, hit the like, subscribe button, comment on any other topics. Uh, on this one, anything else you'd like to hear about, my personal experience, or uh, anything I've discussed in my other videos. Uh, I also put a donate button in there to donate to the channel to help me grow, to be able to put more money into the production and time. But, uh, yeah, like, comment, subscribe, share with somebody if you think they'd be interested. If you like what you've heard in this video, Donate. Donate something to the channel. Anything. Buy me a cup of coffee. But, um, so whatever you take, whatever you, whatever you stick with is going, uh, boxing, BJJ, wrestling, Muay Thai, kickboxing, and there's so many things you can go out there to put yourself at an, in an, at an advantage. And this shit pays off in the long run. You not only are you contributing to your ability to protect yourself and your loved ones, do you put it into your health, your physical health and well-being. You can, you're a little more relaxed and comfortable knowing you don't have to worry about some guy getting stupid. That you can, you know, end that shit quickly if you have to. Like there's a certain level of comfort and security that comes with that. There's a certain level of comfort and security your girl, or your wife, and your kids have when they're with you. You have to be capable of violence. That's just, it's, there's no other way to put it. It's not a bad thing, and don't let anybody tell you otherwise. It's not. Hopefully it won't, but the day may come when you need to fall back on that. And you'll be glad you did every time. So uh, that's it for this one. Hope y'all enjoyed the video. See you on the next one.